fellow teacher, today we are going to talk about correction making. We've been talking about a number of things. We talked about curriculum interpretation, we talked about marking, we talked about question answering techniques, and very many others. So today we are going to talk about correction making. This is one of the key aspects for the excellence of a P7 candidate in PLOE. How do you do your corrections? What do you do in your corrections? Anyway, do you do corrections? If you do corrections, please listen to this and see whether you've been doing it rightly or wrongly. One, as we're talking about marking, one of the things I told you is you must have a marking guide. Now, in corrections, before you do anything, you must use the marking guide you use it during you, you had during marking, you use it to do corrections. Therefore, do not do corrections from your head. However much you are an expert, have a guiding tool, have a marking guide. Hope that one is very clear. My colleague, one, before you do corrections, do what we call paper analysis. What do I mean by paper analysis? One, you must know the kind of paper your children sat. Which level dominated the paper? Which class dominated the paper? Which topics dominated the paper? For example, you can say the paper of SST we did was more of P5, more of knowledge, or maybe more of comprehension, and very many others. So, one, Look at the analysis of the paper. After marking, when you go to class to do corrections, don't do corrections out of general happiness. Uh -uh. That's wrong. One, do correction with the purpose. How do you do the correction with the purpose? Most times, when we do corrections out of the general happiness, we just one. We just answer the questions. We don't do corrections. Two, when you're doing corrections out of the general happiness, we don't analyze to see where we need corrections, where we need time, and where we don't need time. One, when you enter class,